reading from the Gospel of Matthew. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he'll say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. And so they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. Jesus facing down his critics and his challengers, but the heart of this exchange in the last chapters of Matthew's Gospel, where Jesus has entered Jerusalem and he knows he's on a path, an inexorable path of conflict with the religious authorities, and the authorities of this world, um, he is pretty confrontational right back to the folks who would question him. And I think what I, I can draw and what we can draw from this is that sometimes, and especially in our modern culture, there can be a healthy skepticism ranging between healthy skepticism and perhaps an unhelpful cynicism where folks want to question God or question the terms of uh, God showing up in the world, question the church, question the validity of our belief, question any number of things about God and about Jesus in particular and about the church as that extension of Christ in the world. And there are times where it can feel like it is the job of those of us who are active in the faith to win an argument and to explain well enough and to give the right rejoinder or the witty rejoinder to those who would try and cut down um, the ministry and the witness of, of the church in the world. And here we have Jesus showing us what it looks like to own one's space and in the face of a disingenuous question to offer a question back that says, I'm actually not here to prove myself to you. I'm not here to establish my authority uh, according to, to your metric, but rather I'm here to ask the questions. And I'm not suggesting that you and I in the church take this tone. I don't think that would be appropriate because we're not Jesus. But I do find it a bit refreshing that Jesus says, you're gonna question me? No, I'm gonna question you. And he says this back to the religious authorities of his day. And it's a good reminder for me, a good reminder for us, that Jesus and God are not standing by wringing their hands and hoping that they've made a convincing enough argument. They simply say, I am. Jesus here is saying, I am. I have my authority. I don't need to explain it to you. Um, God, of course, famously says, I am. Uh, as, as an identifier and simply states, this is how it is in the world. This is how I am in the world. And while God seems to want to go a long way to stretch forth a hand to help bring us more deeply into the heart of God's love and more deeply into understanding, and we, the church, are part of that invitation for people into deeper knowledge, I was a beneficiary of this very grateful to have had a church at a point in my life that welcomed me and drew me more deeply into faith. But it was not through a timid, um, defensive set of arguments. It was simply by the church being itself, being alive with God's presence, being alive with the confidence of what God says through Jesus, through Christ, and what Jesus indeed says in, in his own uh, self-description and, if you will, defense. So. As we continue through these days of Advent and preparing ourselves and watching with hope for God to come into the world, for Christ to come again into this world, to set things right, to make all of creation in the fullness of time that which God created it to be, it's a bit of a relief for us to remember and to recall it's not our job to frame the argument, it's not our job to uh, make apology for for God or God's ways or God's time frame or anything else. 
it's not necessarily our job to be the ones who ask the question, lest we, in, as those in today's gospel experience, lest we get the question back to us. Um, it is ours to wait with hope, to live in faith, and to live in love with God and with one another, and to ask for God to bring us forward in time to the place where all in all, all shall be drawn up in God's loving arms in the fullness of time, and all will be as uh, God intends it to be. That is the promise of this season. That is the promise of Christ in our life. May God be with you this day. May God bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen.